Like every morning, Daphne went to her favorite local cafe to get her coffee and breakfast sandwich. She left the cafe after she'd paid. A few minutes later, she returned, looking anxious, because she had forgotten her wallet. Strangely, it was nowhere to be found. She called the police to report the incident. Nobody had left the store, so the thief was still there when the officer arrived. He started questioning everyone. Jenny, the cashier, said that Daphne was a regular customer and she had known her for a long time. So, she would never steal her wallet and she didn't see it after Daphne had paid. Andre was a tourist visiting the city for the first time. He said he'd come to the cafe because he'd wanted to try their famous muffins. She claimed he hadn't seen the wallet. He was busy trying to pick what type of muffin he should get at the time. And Harry worked as a store clerk. He said that he'd come there to grab a coffee. And he didn't see the wallet because he was pouring milk into his coffee. So who do you think stole the wallet? It was Harry, the store clerk. Or should I say Harold? Do you see his name tag? He lied about his name when he ordered his drink. Also, even though he said he was pouring milk in his coffee, as you can see, it doesn't have any milk in it. Jessica was an aspiring actor, and she had a big musical theater audition that day. She left her house early in the morning to make it on time, but she had forgotten to take her sheet music oh, with her, no. so she had to drive back. When she walked in, though, she saw her roommate lying on the floor unconscious. A nurse was standing beside her. She explained to Jessica that her roommate had been poisoned, but luckily, she'd had enough time to call an ambulance before she passed out. Jessica immediately realized something was wrong. She thanked the nurse for helping her friend and asked her if she could get her a glass of water or anything else. The nurse agreed, and Jessica hurried to the kitchen. There, she called the police saying, There's a fake nurse in my house. She poisoned my roommate and tried to rob her. How did Jessica understand that? When she arrived at the house, there was no ambulance car in the driveway or in the street. And it's not like paramedics started using Uber. And you might have also noticed that the paramedic bag the nurse was holding was slightly open and Jessica's roommate's jewelry was dangling out of it. Anna and Catherine are both influencers, but take a look at the latest photos they posted. Which of these ladies do you think is richer? Catherine is richer, of course. Just look at the number of likes on her photo. She has 27,907 likes. Anna, on the other hand, has 9,837, which means that Catherine has way more followers and must be earning millions. Annie managed to buy presents for everyone except her dad. She knew what everyone wanted, but her dad was kind of secretive and not the talking type. He was also not great with technology and never bought anything online. So there was no way she could sneak into her dad's computer and check the saved items in his shopping cart. But he always liked to make lists in his little notebook, and Annie was sure she might be able to find a wish list there. So she sneaked into her father's office one day to look for the notebook. It was nowhere to be found, but his study table had a locked drawer. Uh -oh. She looked for the key around the room but couldn't find it anywhere. That's when two different sticky notes attached to two different books inside the bookcase caught her eye. The first note was attached to a psychology book and had P5487TH written on it. The second note was attached to a detective novel and said P21320TH. Annie immediately knew what the notes meant. Can you guess what she had to do? She had to open to page 548 in the first book and find the seventh word on this page. Then, she had to open page 213 in the second book and find the 20th word on that page. The words she found were under and desk. The girl immediately looked under the desk and found the drawer key taped to it. James was walking back to his apartment from work late at night. Suddenly, he was hit on the head and taken away. When he woke up, he found himself in a small room. He tried to escape, but the door was locked with a padlock. James tried to look for the key, but
but there was nothing in there but a window with strange-looking metal bars. Suddenly, he noticed something. It helped him to find the key. Do you see it too? One of the metal bars is different from the others. That one is the key. Giselle was camping in the forest during a night when the moon was full. After midnight when she was making s'mores by a fire, she heard a loud howl. There was a werewolf in the uh -oh. forest and it managed to find Giselle's tent because it smelled of food there. Thankfully, Giselle was not in her tent anymore when the werewolf arrived because she had already run away. Hiding behind a tree, she watched the creature eat her s'mores and tear up the tent. When the werewolf left before sunrise, the girl returned to her tent, but everything was ruined. Uh -oh. There was no more food or water left. Her cell phone had run out of battery, so she couldn't call anyone. She started wandering through the forest and soon she came upon a witch's house. When she walked in, she saw the witch and another lady. Giselle asked the witch if she could send her home. The witch agreed to help her on one condition. She would only send Giselle home if she guessed her sister's name. If not, she would turn her into a frog. Giselle knew the answer, but how? Did you notice that the witch's sister is wearing the same necklace around her neck as the werewolf? Well, Giselle did, and there's a name written on the necklace. Abigail. Zoe went to a security guard and reported that her gym bag was missing. She said she'd gone to the ladies' restroom after her dance cardio class. She was fixing her hair when someone came up from behind and pushed her. So, she didn't see the person who had taken her bag. The security guard refused to check the footage from the security camera that was outside the restroom. Neither did he file a report. Why? Zoe said she was fixing her hair, so she must have been looking in the mirror. If she was telling the truth about someone sneaking up from behind, she would have definitely seen their reflection. So, Zoe probably lied so that she could sue them. Luckily, the security guard was super smart. Several women went missing in a small town. James Darcy and his police team had been searching for months, but they couldn't find the place where the women were kept. One day, when Sandra was jogging, she decided to use another route to get home. As she was passing an old cabin, she heard screams coming from its basement. She immediately called James Darcy to report it. James and his team arrived at the place and busted in. They found there three women. They all said that they had been locked in the basement for months, but James knew one of them was lying. The first woman said that her name was Tammy and that she had spent almost eight months in the basement. The second woman claimed that her name was Hannah and that she had been there for almost five months. The third woman told them that her name was Allison and that she had stayed there for about three months. Can you tell who the liar is? Allison is telling the truth. Look at her. Her clothes are dirty. Her hair is greasy. Her roots have started to grow out. She definitely hasn't seen daylight for a long time. The same goes for Hannah. But look at Tammy. She looks clean. Her clothes look new. Her hair and makeup look fresh. So it must be her who is lying. David spent his summer break at a science camp that was at a big space facility. When the summer break ended and school started, he told his friends from the science club all about his camp adventures. He said that at the facility, he had found a secret room. And in there, there was a time machine. He stepped into it and pressed some buttons to test if it really worked. And it did. He traveled through time and was able to talk to Nikola Tesla, Chuck Berry, and King Aragorn. But one of his friends immediately called him out for lying. How did he know that David made up this whole thing? Well, even if David actually managed to travel through time, he might have been able to talk to Nikola Tesla and Chuck Berry, but definitely not King Aragorn, because he is a fictional character.
Vicky has as many brothers as sisters, but each of her brothers has only half as many brothers as sisters. How many brothers and sisters are there in Vicky's family? The correct answer is four sisters and three brothers. The key to solving this is to keep it simple. Just count the sisters and brothers in total and in terms of their own number of siblings. Vicky is a music teacher. One day, she came over to her student's house to give him a lesson. The door was unlocked, so Vicky got in. Her student, Mr. Green, was lying on the couch with the flu. He was very weak, and Vicky decided to call the three best doctors in this town. Since Mr. Green was really rich and influential, many people wanted to get rid of him. That's why his bodyguards had to search the doctors before they began any treatment. It turned out that one of the doctors was a criminal. Can you tell which one? This guy. Why does he need an axe? Mr. Green got well and returned to his business duties. He runs a small company producing expensive diamond rings. On Friday, when the working week was finally over, he got a call from his bank. Mr. Green found out that someone had stolen all the money he had. He suspected that it might have been one of his employees, so he asked each of them what they'd been doing that day. Helen, the jeweler, said she always made two rings a day and showed all the rings she had made that week. Jesse, the sales manager, said that he had been busy meeting with the clients. And Amber, the cleaner, said that she'd been cleaning the office every day as usual, and she didn't notice anything suspicious. Who lied? Helen, there are five working days in a regular week. She said she made two rings a day, but she only showed eight rings. It means she missed one day of work. Vicky was walking down a shopping mall. Suddenly, she heard screams, looking outside the window and saw two women in big trouble. Can you tell who has more chances to survive? Look at this lady's hand. It's made of metal. She's a robot, so she'll more likely survive this adventure. One morning, Vicky was walking in the park and noticed this missing cat poster. Can you help her find the cat in this area? It's hiding in this old lady's bag. Vicky explained to the old lady that the cat had been missing, but the old lady refused to give the cat away so easily. First of all, Vicky had to solve her riddle. I can whistle, I can howl, I can scream, and I can whisper, but I don't speak. What am I? Can you help Vicky? The correct answer is wind. After getting the cat, Vicky headed to its owner's home. She walked through this beautiful park. Can you spot what's wrong here? This bench doesn't have legs. It's literally flying in the air. Vicky brought the cat to its owner, Diana. She was very glad to get her pet back and invited Vicky for dinner. Vicky was very hungry and agreed. Diana served these four dishes with various foods, but only one of them is safe to eat. Can you tell which one? The coconut cake is sprinkled with some human nails. If you look closely at this tomato soup, you'll notice some metal nails. 
Something's moving inside this burger. So this pasta is the only edible dish here. After dinner, Diana made a confession. She was a real witch, but Vicky didn't believe in magic at all. That's why Diana offered her this deal. If you solve my riddle, I'm gonna use some magic to fulfill your biggest wish. I'm beautiful, up in the sky, I'm magical, yet I cannot fly. To some people, I bring luck. To some people, wealth. What am I? Can you help Vicky out? The correct answer is rainbow. Vicky has always wanted to become a famous singer. She received an invitation to a singing contest. Vicky sang beautifully and won first place. After the performance, she drank a glass of water backstage. After that, Vicky felt very sick. The contest manager called the ambulance. Doctors said that someone had poisoned Vicky. The police questioned three suspects and searched their bags. Lily said, I was crying in the dressing room. This contest meant so much to me. Jessica said, Who do you think I am? Singers should stand for each other. And Rose said, I was outside the music hall with Lily. She was crying because she had lost this competition. Who poisoned Vicky? Lily said she was in the dressing room, while Rose said that they had been outdoors. Therefore, one or two of them are liars. But only Rose carries toothpaste but no toothbrush in her bag. That's pretty suspicious. When Vicky got better, she checked her mailbox and saw three messages from different music producers. Tom offered her a tour in Europe. Ryan offered Vicky to work on her first album at his record company in New York. And Joanna sent this invitation to participate in a TV show. But only one of these offers is real. Can you help Vicky make the right choice? Joanna's message is spam. She doesn't mention Vicky's name anywhere, and the text includes a suspicious link. Ryan sent Vicky a picture of his record company. But there are palm trees and a tropical forest outside the window. It's clearly not in New York. So, Vicky should pick Tom. Vicky was walking home from a rehearsal and stepped on a magical portal. She fainted and woke up in an enchanted forest. Suddenly, a wicked witch popped out of nowhere and gave Vicky a choice. If you solve my riddle, I'll let you go. And if not, you'll get lost in this forest forever. Here's the riddle. I can be flipped and broken, but I never move. I can be closed and opened and sometimes removed. You can seal me with your hands. What am I? Unfortunately, Vicky failed to crack this riddle. And what about you? The correct answer is a deal. The wicked witch left Vicky alone in the forest. Vicky searched the area and found three paths leading to the nearest village. The first path goes through hungry wolves. Giant mutant plants are waiting in the second path. They eat all mammals, including human beings. And the third path is covered with a bunch of bugs and worms. Which way should Vicky go? Although insects are gross, they are the least harmful to humans. So Vicky should choose this path. <sighs> Vicky got very hungry and decided to find some food in the village. When she came closer, she realized the gates were locked. Can you help her guess the right code? Take a look at the screen. It requires a four-digit code. Someone decorated the gates with this symbol. It's a hint. If we divide this symbol into four parts, we will see that it's made up of four twos. 
So, Vicky should enter 2222 and come in. When Vicky entered the village, an angry pixie stopped her and said, Not so fast, lady. You gotta solve one riddle first. What should you do when you see a green man? Vicky cracked this puzzle right away. What about you? You should cross the road. Vicky solved it so easily because she was standing next to a traffic light. It turned out it wasn't an ordinary village. Various magical creatures lived here together. Vicky entered the local club and asked for some food. But the owner, Werewolf Fred, said, If you want to eat, you gotta work. Now Vicky's job is to check the guests' ID cards. She shouldn't let suspicious persons or those under 21 get inside. Take a look at these three ID cards and figure out who shouldn't enter the club. The first one, Vampire, is already 21, and nothing looks suspicious in his ID, so Vicky should let him in. And this werewolf lady seems alright too. This elf's ID card says he was born on September 31st, but such a date doesn't exist. Therefore, Vicky shouldn't let the elf in. After work, Vicky went to the local supermarket to buy some food. She saw two attractive young ladies eating street food there. Can you tell which one of them isn't human? Take a closer look at this ice cream. Raw meat? This lady is definitely a werewolf. Vicky liked this village and decided to stay there. She met the love of her life, and two years later, they got engaged. Today is her wedding day. Can you guess who her husband is? It's the third guy. He's wearing a tie, which means he attended the wedding. And he's wearing a ring, too. Okay, let's go. We'll start with checking your vision. All you need to do is read the word. Let's go. What's written here? It says vampire. Next one. Can you read it? Is Meta. Another one for you. Look closely. Right. It says Snowflake. Next one's up. Are your eyes sharp enough to read it? This is Meadow. Another one for you. Look closely. Yeah, that's Waterfall. Now I'll be showing you some pictures and your task will be to find all the hidden objects in each of them. Here's the first one. You need to find the five objects you can see at the bottom of the screen. Okay, here's where they are. Did you manage to find all of them? One more for you. Concentrate, and keep in mind, you can pause the video if you need it. Great! One, two, three, four, and five. I hope you spotted them all. Emma Lynn is an archaeologist working in Africa. She has accidentally gotten stuck in a cave, and there are just three ways out. Her map shows that if she goes left, she'll come to a pond that pulls everything in. If she goes straight ahead, she'll run into dangerous dinosaurs that eat everything they see. If she goes right, she'll find herself very close to an erupting volcano. Which way is safe?
the road leading ahead. Dinosaurs went extinct millions of years ago. It was Dana's birthday, and her best friends had prepared a gift for her. But first, the girl had to find it. They gave her a note with a hint. Do you know how Dana can read it? It looks as if the note doesn't make sense, but it does. The text is mirrored. That's why she can read it with the help of a mirror. Let's see. So it says, your present is in the laundry basket in the basement. Cheryl had to sneak into her dad's computer to delete some emails she had accidentally forwarded him. Her dad had memory problems, so luckily for Cheryl, he always left notes with his passcodes. And indeed, one of such notes was right on his desk. Cheryl typed in 6989. Unfortunately, this passcode was wrong. Can you figure out the correct one? The note was simply turned upside down. Cheryl should try 6869. Reese was on vacation in Cyprus. One day, he saw a beautiful woman and asked her out on a date. The woman said that she would go out with him, but only if he guessed her name. He said it was impossible, and she gave him a hint. The capital of Spain, the capital of Austria, the capital of Romania, and the capital of Australia. Can you help Reese figure out what the woman's name is? The capital refers to the capital letters of these countries' names. So, S, A, R, and A. The woman's name must be Sarah. Yvonne has four frogs, Dot, Hoppy, Yoda, and Aristotle. One of them is black and green, and three of them are black and blue. Find out which color each of them is if Dot and Hoppy are of the same color, Aristotle isn't black and green. If Dot and Hoppy are of the same color, then they must both be black and blue, since there's only one black and one green frog. If Aristotle isn't black and green, then it's black and blue too. So Yoda is black and green. Honor and Alea are identical twins. After they were born, Honor had her birthday 22 times, but Alea only had her birthday 5 times. How is it possible? They were born on a leap year. Honor was born late at night on February 28th, let's say at 11.59 p.m. And Alea was born a bit later, at 12.01 a.m. It was already February 29th, which only occurs once every four years. Now let's relax a bit and try to guess some movies. I'll show you some combinations of emojis, and your task is to guess the movie. Ready? Here's the first one. What's your guess? Of course, it's everyone's favorite, Edward Scissorhands. Okay, here's the next one. You must know it. It's The Devil Wears Prada. Can you guess this one? It's Million Dollar Baby. Moving on. You just can't get it wrong. Obviously, it's Home Alone. There's no other story like this one. Can you guess this movie? This reverse transformation reminds me of The Curious Case of Benjamin Button. I have a couple more for you. I love this movie. Do you know it? It's Interstellar. And how about this one? What's your guess? This one is I Am Legend. 
In the afternoon, Detective Callum went to a little restaurant for lunch. He was waiting for his order. He overheard a waiter and a client arguing. The waiter claimed that the woman had ordered a special breakfast set and was now refusing to pay. Hmm. The woman said she'd only ordered a coffee. Detective Callum knew who was lying. Do you? It's afternoon. No one serves breakfast specials at this time. So, the waiter was lying. Miss Vidges called the police and reported that someone had broken into her house, tied her up, and robbed her. When police officers arrived, the house was a mess, and the woman was indeed tied to a chair. Still, the officers didn't believe that it was a real robbery. Why? If Miss Vidges was tied up and couldn't move, how did she manage to call the police? Her cell phone is too far away from her. Hmm. An elderly man had poor vision. He lived with his son, Mark, because he needed assistance. One day, the man was resting in his armchair while his son was preparing dinner. Suddenly, Mark heard glass shatter. He ran into the room and asked what had happened. The window was broken. His father told him that some dark-eyed, dark-haired young guy had thrown a stone into the window and then had run away. Mark didn't believe his father. Why? The man had poor vision. He couldn't see the boy and, of course, he couldn't figure out the color of his hair and eyes. Miss Nebula Hayes left for vacation. While she was away, her home office got robbed. All the people whose fingerprints had been found in the office were interrogated. Celeste, Nebula's cousin, said that she'd been to the house just once because Miss Hayes needed her to send her a document from her office. Alyssa, the gardener, said that she'd been coming every third day to take care of the garden and plants. Cash, the cleaner, said that he'd come every Wednesday to clean the house. Who robbed the office? It was the gardener. Celeste and Cash had some reason to be in the office, so their fingerprints aren't that suspicious. But why would Alyssa come there? As you see, there are no plants in the office. In a VIP club, a rich lady was robbed. Someone stole her diamond necklace. The police visited three main suspects and interrogated them. Paxton said that he'd been at the party. He even knew what necklace they were talking about, but he had nothing to do with the theft. Reagan said that she hadn't noticed any necklaces. Gaia said that she hadn't been to that party. She was too poor to afford to go to such clubs. Who's the criminal? It must be Gaia. She said that she was poor, but look at her huge house and her fancy car. How can she afford all this if she's poor? Let's take a little break and check how attentive you are. Look, here's a ball and three cups. I'll put the ball here in this cup in the middle. Your task is to watch the cups and then tell me where the ball is. Ready? Go! So where is the ball? Look, it's here. Did you get it? Okay, let's try this one. Now I have four cups, and I'll be moving faster. I put the ball right here. Watch it closely. So where do you think it is? It's in this cup. Let's make it super hard and see if you can get it now. Five cups, and I'll move them even faster than before. Ready? So where's the ball? It's right here. Chloe opened her locker and found an envelope. Inside, there was a calendar and a note asking if she wanted to go to the prom. The note wasn't signed. There were just several numbers at the bottom. 25, 30, 24, 11, 26. Can you help the girl figure out who asked her out? The calendar is the key. 
you have to find all the numbers in the calendar and the first letters of the respective months will make up the name. So, 25 is circled in June, so it's a J. Number 30 is circled in April, so it's an A. 24 is in September, it's an S. 11 is in October, so we've got an O. And 26 is in November, N. The guy's name must be Jason. Hopefully Chloe knows him. Annika was poisoned, and Detective Callum was on the case. Hmm. One of the main suspects was Marcus Jones, Annika's sister's boyfriend, because someone had seen them together. Hmm. Good afternoon, Mr. Jones. I'm sorry to tell you this, but your girlfriend's sister was poisoned. Do you know anything about it? By the way, do you have any photos of her? Marcus said, Oh, poor Annika. She's such a good girl. Yes, I have pictures of my girlfriend and her sisters. Here it is. The detective looked at the photo and arrested Marcus. Why? In the picture, there are four girls. This means that Marcus's girlfriend has three sisters. Still, Marcus somehow knows exactly which one of them was poisoned. You suddenly wake up trapped in a dark room. Your only source of light is a candle. There are two doors in front of you. Behind one of them, there's a tunnel that will lead you outside to freedom. Behind the other, just a cold brick wall. You have a key that will open only one of the doors, and you can try it just once. So how do you know which door to try? Hold the candle up to each keyhole. The flame will move near the door that leads outside. You escape to freedom, but you need to send some important documents to your friend Beth. You can't mail them in a regular package because the precious papers will get stolen. So you put them in a box and lock it. But Beth doesn't have the key to this lock. How can you send the papers if you can't send the key to the lock separately? First, send the lock box to Beth. She'll attach her own lock and send the box back to you. Then, remove your own lock and send the package again. Beth can then remove her lock and finally open the package. Bad news! You get a call one morning from Beth. She says the crucial documents were stolen from her office. They'd been on the desk the evening before, but are nowhere to be found this morning. You immediately go there to question the employees. In no time, you gather three suspects. Sean said he had been at the movies last night. Michael had taken his girlfriend to an amusement park. And Christina was at a prestigious art gallery. Who's lying? Sean. His movie ticket isn't torn. Having been caught red-handed, Sean makes a break for it. He hops in his car and drives away. Law enforcement are on the lookout. Sean sees a police car right ahead of him and starts driving toward it. Why would he do that? He was on a bridge. He needed to go toward the patrol car to get to the other side and make his escape. No such luck for poor Sean. He gets caught and locked up. But he starts hearing rumors of an inmate planning to break out. The guards have two suspects. First, a quiet bookworm who spends most of his days with his nose buried in sci-fi novels. The second, a big burly tattooed guy who's always working out. Who should Sean become friends with if he wants to get out of here? The bookworm. Look closer, and you'll see his bookmark is actually a file. On Friday afternoon, the owner of that same prestigious art gallery discovered that four of the most famous artist's self-portraits had been stolen during an exhibition. The police show up to do an investigation, and now they have three suspects. Sarah, the artist, said she disappeared into one of the studios to paint. 
John, the security guard, explained he was just waiting outside and had no idea the portraits were gone. Daniel, the caterer, stated he was at a nearby store picking up extra napkins when the robbery took place. So, who's the thief? It's the security guard. He couldn't have known the stolen paintings were portraits if he was standing outside. As fate would have it, there was another incident that night. Michael, who never really liked what passed for art in modern times, rushed into the gallery and caused millions of dollars worth of damage to several paintings. Yet the gallery's owner thanked him for his actions. How come? Michael is a firefighter. The water from his hose damaged several masterpieces, but he still managed to extinguish the fire and save many more works. They awarded Michael a big check in gratitude. He heads home just in time to get his five kids all packed up for a camping trip that weekend. Mike and his wife are really looking forward to having the weekend for themselves to relax. But when they woke up on Saturday, they discovered the check was missing from their safe. Once the officer showed up, they interviewed the three people who were in the house that morning. The chef said he was in the kitchen getting school lunches packed. The cleaner said he finished cleaning quickly that day and left early. The butler had just gotten back after taking the kids to camp three hours away. Who's lying? It's the chef. It's Saturday, so there's no school, and the kids have gone camping. Meanwhile, on the other side of town, a scientist is working on something bizarre. He invites Kevin and Claire as blind test subjects for his new serum invention. He gives them each a glass of ice-cold lemonade. Kevin drinks his fast, but Claire apprehensively waits to see the side effects on him first. After two hours, nothing happens. So she drinks her glass. Two minutes later, her skin turns green. If both the drinks had the serum, why was only Claire affected? The serum was in the ice. Since Kevin drank his fast, none of it got in the lemonade. Claire runs out of the lab in horror. She gets in her car and speeds off. As she's driving down a long, empty road, one of her tires pops off. Good thing she has a spare in the trunk. But here's the problem. She now has no lug nuts to put the spare on with. So what should Claire do? Unscrew one lug nut from each of the other three wheels and use them to attach the spare tire. It'll be enough to get to the nearest garage safely. As Claire is putting on her spare tire, the scientist catches up to her. He hands her four pills and tells her it's a complex cure to the green face serum. Two of the pills are an antidote, and the other two are a catalyst that activates it. Claire must take one of each type together. If she takes two of the same, her face will stay green forever. Just as the scientist is handing her the pills, he trips and they get all mixed up. They look identical. What should Claire do? Grind the tablets up, mix all the powder together, and divide it in two parts. Each half will have the same amount of catalyst and antidote. It worked! And just in time! Whew. The next day, Claire has a big calculus exam. But funny enough, all the students in the class refuse to take it. Professor Miller can expel only one student for skipping the test. All of them know each other's names. If a student knows they'll be expelled, they agree to take the test. How can the professor make all the students take it? should tell them she'll expel the student whose name comes first alphabetically. 
Then, this person won't skip the test. The next person on the list won't skip either, and so on until the end of the list. Professor Miller grabs her cup of coffee, takes a sip, goes to set it down, and what's this? It's stuck to her hand! Somebody put glue on the cup, and she's got three suspects. Look carefully to find out which student is playing tricks on the professor. Sure, the first student has an awfully guilt-ridden look on his face. And the second student's smile looks just like pride for a job well done. But look closer at the third student's pocket. Yep, it's the tip of a glue bottle. Professor Miller is so annoyed by her class's shenanigans, she decides to change her career. Wow. She opens a shoe factory. She's so successful that she builds a second one in another city. But despite her success, the problems don't end. Her employees keep secretly taking shoes from the plant. What can she do to resolve the issue? Have one of her factories start making only left shoes, and the other only right ones. One of those shoe swipers is driving a semi-truck full of shoes to sell for a profit. He comes to a tunnel, and there's a major problem. His truck is just an inch too tall. But he can still drive through the tunnel. How? Let some of the air out of the tires. It'll lower the truck just enough. When the shoe swiper gets through the tunnel, he comes to a fork in the road. One goes to the town, the other to never-ending wilderness. There are guides standing at each. The catch? One always tells the truth, the other always lies. The driver doesn't know who's who, and he's only allowed one question. What should he ask to find out which road goes to town? Ask either one of the guides which road the other would say is the right way. Then he must choose the opposite. The truth teller knows the other will lie, so they'll point the driver toward the road to nowhere. If he asks the liar, they'll know the other guard would honestly point him toward the town, so they'll again recommend the road to nowhere. The shoe thief takes the road to town, but he has another puzzle to answer before he's allowed to enter. The guard at the gate asks him one simple question. What's the logic in the order of the following words? Fun, blue, be, more, and dive. Every word rhymes with its number on the list. Fun, one, blue, two, B three, and so on. The shoe swiper finally settles down in this new town. Too bad for him, he can only use a payphone to make calls. One day, the phone breaks. He informs the phone company, but they do nothing. He tries again the next day. Same result. The third time, he finally gets them to come out and fix the phone. So what did he say? He claimed that people were making calls without paying. 